Let's look at that mighty tree. And let's add a custom tree to Minecraft. 121 Minecraft modding courses available down below. With over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. Alright, we find ourselves back in Terrier once more. And in this tutorial, we'll be adding a custom tree to our Minecraft mod. Now, very importantly, this is going to be quote unquote only the custom tree, not custom tree gen. That happens in the next tutorial however this still depends on both world gen no only world gen well and i guess on data gen as well because world gen depends on data gen but yeah it does depend on the world gen stuff so if you haven't watched the world gen setup tutorial highly recommended to watch that first otherwise as per usual all of the code is available down below and we're going to start with adding all of the different blocks because a tree as you might imagine has quite a few blocks associated with it and we're going to start off by making a custom block class so in the block custom package we're going to right click new java class and it's going to be the mod flammable rotated pillar block crazy name of a class i absolutely agree with you but it is indeed the case also pillar is spelt with an a not an e that is going to be fine we're going to fix that and then this will extend the rotated pillar block right here in this case simply hover over this Create constructor matching super and once again if the name of the parameter annoys you click on it press shift f6 and we can change it to properties here in this case now that we have this the question is why do we even need this crazy class well let's think about a log for a second right a log has bark around it and then it has a top and a bottom texture so it's not a normal block and that would be the rotated pillar block part of this and then the flammability is well obviously all of the different uh different logs and stuff they are flammable so is flammable yes get flammability you need to set this and then get fire spread and from top to bottom we first of all return a true because well it is indeed flammable the flammability of a log including the stripped variant and the wood variants is five and the same thing happens with the fire spread that is however not everything that we need for this or this class for because there is one more thing and that is the get tool modified state method because this one will allow us to actually strip our logs now we're going to write the first part of this and then we're going to make a deliberate error as we don't have everything yet but we're going to say if context get item in hand get item not get but get item if that is an instance of an axe item so we're going to just say hey, is this is any axe item then we will be able to well, basically strip our logs now in this case we're just going to make a deliberate error so we don't forget to come back over here because that can sometimes happen and then the mod flammable rotated pillar block class for the time being is done and we can move on to the mod blocks class where we're going to add first of all the four mod flammable rotated pillar blocks and then the planks leaves as well as the sapling so we'll see of course these are all going to be public static final registry objects of type block here in this case let's actually make them rotated pillar blocks over here and this is going to be the walnut underscore log equal to the register block method i'm going to call this the walnut underscore log and then a supplier of a new mod flammable rotated pillar block where we're going to make a full copy of the oak log this is going to be of course blocks that oak log blocks dot oak log here in this case there we go and we have the first one done we can then duplicate this four additional times and yeah that's fine and then we're gonna do this this is gonna be the leaves and then this is the uh last thing so that's gonna be seven of them that's absolutely right and then we can proceed so we're gonna change all of them like i said all of the code is available down below if you are familiar with this procedure then you know, you know basically you can take a look at the the code copy that over as well otherwise you can of course also have this running in the background while you're doing this that's totally fine so we have a stripped walnut variant over here and i always like to change the blocks over here to whatever the stripped or to whatever the actual oak log equivalence is here in this case so stripped walnut log would get the full copy of the stripped oak log i just like to do that it is not strictly necessary i believe but i just like to do that and the last one here is the stripped underscore walnut underscore wood in this case and of course here's the same thing stripped oak wood with that the four basic logs are done and we can move on once again or move back i guess to the mod flammable rotated pillar blocks where we can say hey if the state so if state is mod blocks dot this is going to be for the walnut log dot get if that is the case then we can return the new state and that new state is going to be mod blocks dot stripped walnut log dot get that default block state and now very importantly set value 
of access to the state of the or the, the the value of the state that we've just modified. Reason why we need to do this is obviously a log we can place down horizontally or vertically or the other way horizontally. And if we do that, well, that is going to be saved in the access block state value over here, right? The the block state property. And if we were to just do the default one, then any block that we were to strip would just turn into the straight one. So that just points up, which of course, not something we want. We can then duplicate this if statement. And what we can do here is then use the wood right here and then also talk about the stripped wood right here. And that's fine. If you have more than, let's say, three or four different types of wood, right? Obviously, every time you do this, you would have to add another two if statements. I highly recommend as soon as you have like three or more, you make a map from the non-stripped variant to the stripped variant block, and then just have one line where it just basically compares the two. Very straightforward. Intermediate Java should be more than enough to basically do this. That is not too complicated, but that is a good thing to keep in mind. Regardless, we're going to continue over here with the following. This is now going to be a block again because we have walnut planks, of course, walk along the plank. No, of course not. This is the walnut planks and this is going to be a normal block, very importantly. And here, of course, we're going to get the oak planks with, however, an anonymous class because, uh -huh, uh -huh, yes, we need basically the th same three methods over here overridden for the planks. And we're just going to literally just do that by basically copying them over into here into the anonymous class. And of course, planks are also flammable. They have, however, a bigger flammability over here of 20. Interesting. And then the same thing or a similar thing is going to happen with the next one, which is going to be the walnut leaves. And hopefully no one of you leaves just yet because this is going to be a leaves block, of course. There we go. And it's going to copy over oak leaves with, once again, an anonymous class where we can literally just copy over the contents of the planks. But here we're going to go crazy because leaves have a flammability of 60 and a fire spread of 30. If you have ever seen leaves on fire in Minecraft, well, then you know that they burn like freaking heck. It is crazy. And yeah, with that done, that is the these two. And then the last one here is just going to be our walnut sapling, which is going to be interesting. That's going to be the walnut underscore sapling. And this is going to be a new sapling block. Now, the first parameter is going to be kept empty because here we need a tree grower, which we do not have yet. And then the second one, of course, here, once again, we're going to copy over the oak sapling. Fascinating as well as fantastic because that is everything we're going to need. And then, of course, ha, <laughs> data gen it is. Now, luckily, when it comes to data gen, the first couple of things, super freaking easy. Now, I will copy over most of this. But once again, everything is available to you down below. You can see log wood, the strip variants, the planks, the sapling, they all simply drop themselves. Super freaking easy. The only thing that is special is the leaves over here that we want to use a create leaves drop method call with where the sapling can drop un under basically certain chances over here. That's literally all we need to do for the loot. Super freaking simple. When it comes to the block states, it gets, uh, you know, it's okay, I guess, but not too crazy either. What we can do is we can use the log block method over here, mod blocks dot. This is going to be for the normal log dot get, and that should work totally fine. And we can do the same thing over here for the stripped variant. So this is going to be the stripped log variant, and that is awesome. But then for the, this is not actually true. This is for the wood variant. Wait, 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 wait a second. No, this is correct for the stripped variant. I was correct. <laughs> and then for the axis though, this is for the wood ones, and this is going to be quite interesting. So mod blocks dot walnut wood so first of all the normal one here we're then going to call the block texture method and we're going to pass in the mod blocks dot walnut log dot get again and we want to duplicate this block texture over here and then basically we can copy over the entire axis block call for the stripped wood and then here we want the stripped log and then here we want the stripped log as well because of course when you think about the stripped variants of wood as well as a log how does it look like? Well, I mean, or rather, when you think about the wood, either stripped or non-stripped, what? how does it look like? Well, it's just the bark around. So obviously, it's just the bark of the walnut log here and here of the stripped walnut log. So that's why that is the case. And then when it comes to the rest, well, I mean, we first of all need the block items for all four of those because those are not generated via these calls. Then the walnut planks are super simple, simply a block with item called here. And then when it comes to both the sapling as well as the leaves, 
there are sadly no methods here that we can use so there are no sapling or leaves methods so we'll simply make our own over here like i said all available down below as well for you to download there are also pretty simple all things considered and then of course you can simply call them for the leaves block over here and the sapling block as well and one more important thing for the sapling block is that we still need to add that manually inside of the item over here we need to make a, an item method even for this this is the sapling item now the reason why we need a custom method for it is because the texture is in the block folder as you can see so this is under the block folder and therefore we need to make a custom method for it but not to worry that's totally fine and then we can proceed to the blocks uh, the tags over here the tags also quite important because here we need to add this, this is extremely important block tags and this is for logs that burn and we want to add all of our logs. So this is going to start with the walnut log.get. And we can basically duplicate this four additional times for both the wood over here, normal wood first, and then the stripped log, and then lastly the stripped wood. Now, why do we need this? This is needed so that our custom logs are all added to the logs tag, because the logs that burn will eventually, if we actually take a look at this, be added over here to the logs tag. And that is the tag associated with your leaves not decaying next to a log this is extremely important so if you do not add this and for some reason your leaves start decaying even though they are on a normal like like next to a log that is the reason why it has not been properly added to the tag and when it comes to the item tags we can actually basically do a similar thing this is going to be for the item tags over here and this is going to be for logs that burn as well but we can literally just add the same one so mod blocks dot this is going to be the walnut log that get as item. Very important that we add the as item here. And we can do this for all of the ones as well. I do want to keep my specific order though. There's going to be the log here and then here the wood. Awesome. And then one last one we can use is, or we can basically add this to, is the item tags of planks. And that will add a couple of different uh, basically uh, recipes to our planks over here. Now, do know that obviously the basically it's going to be able to be made into sticks and then i think there are i think like one or two more in terms of the planks but that's basically it obviously if you have a wood type specific recipe well then that is not going to work with just the generic planks over here in this case but that is going to be those ones done now we have left the tree grower right here that has not been added but first of all we're going to go down all the way to the resources and the assets to add all of the different things here, including the translation. Of course, pretty straightforward in this case over here. And then, of course, the textures. How would I able to forget them? I could never forget those. Those are going to be uh, seven textures, I believe. This should be all of the things that we're going to need. Absolutely. Strip variants, the logs, the top, as well as the normal one. And then the sapling planks and the leaves. Absolutely fantastic. And having added all of those, now we can finally go the configured features because like i said what happens here is that when you spawn or when you use a sapling the tree is actually saved as a configured feature because well when we think back to my crazily drawn explanation over here a configured feature was nothing more than hey how is a particular feature going to look like and of course that's exactly how we would define a tree right if we define it hey this is roughly how it's going to look like all of a sudden there we freaking go of course starting off here with a public static final resource key of configured feature of type question mark comma question mark and this is going to be our walnut underscore key equal to the register key method calling this walnut over here there you go so here I will copy over the register core, but I will explain each line individually. So we're going to take a look at it and we can basically do it like this. So obviously this is going to be calling the context and the walnut key. This is a tree feature. And then we're configuring that feature with the tree configuration builder. And the first two lines uh, are basically fit together. Then these two lines fit together. And then the last one is sort of not as important, but that's going to be fine. So the block state provider over here is what is the log that we're placing down? And then how are we placing this log down? That's literally it. Highly recommended to check out the trunk placers. There's multiple different ones over here. Similarly, you can use a different block state provider. So the block state provider, there's also a random one, uh, the weighted list, things like that. So you can even change it up and have multiple different blocks set down as logs that would totally work highly recommended to play around with this 
The same thing then goes for the next pair over here. This is the leaves, obviously, right? What types of leaves or what block is our leaves going to be? And yes, in theory, you can replace this with diamonds. You can replace this with emeralds and you would have very strange trees. Of course, that would work because these are just, you can put in any block that you would want. Very interesting indeed. And then here, the foliage placer, a similar type of thing. We have different foliage placers. Highly recommended to test all of those out. Change the numbers. Just be open to experimentation and see what might happen. And then the two layer feature size, this is one thing that I'm still a little bit just kind of uh, unsure about. So the feature size, if I understand it correctly, should be something of the sorts of like, okay, how big is this feature? And then where can I like place another feature like next to it? Uh, that's sort of the idea. However, honestly, one more thing here, just play around with it again and see where you end up with. And what we can do is we can look in the tree, I believe this would be the tree features. I guess, yes, tree features. This is where we can basically find each individual configured feature for a tree. So for example, the birch trees, well, how do they look like? Well, let's just take a look. We can see over here, create birch. This is a straight blob tree with a log leaves, and then we have some heights and radiuses. Highly recommended to check out this particular class as well. Vanilla, as always, is one of the best resources that you have available. Now, one last thing, we need the tree grower. That's going to be under world gen. We're going to make a new package called tree. And inside of there, we'll make a new Java class called the mod tree growers, not the tree showers. And inside of there, we're going to have the public static final tree grower class or tree grower. We're going to call this the walnut over here equal to a new tree grower. Then tutorial mod dot mod ID and then a new line over here so we can see this is basically how it's going to look like uh, this is so that the walnut over here is under our own mod id very important that we add the colon over here as well that is extremely important then we're going to have an optional of empty then we're going to ha have an optional of mod configured features dot walnut key and then another optional not of but in this case empty and with that done we have it we can go on to our mod blocks class and we can say mod tree growers that walnut and all of a sudden we have everything we're going to need as per usual because the trees can get quite complicated because there's a lot of different you know moving parts over here highly recommended to check out the code all linked in the description below in the github repository now what we can do is run the data gen this should get us i think about 36 36 json files generated obviously because we have all of the different blocks over here as well as the configured feature right most of them obviously i mean basically all of them except for one comes from all of the blocks over here and then we only have the configured feature one that also gets generated and there we freaking go on the dot 36 just like i said and with this done we can jump into the game and see if it works now, what fatal flaw have I done? Of course, I have not added any of them to the creative mode tab, but not to worry. Let's just set this to a to a sapling over here. Let's spawn it, and then we're going to add this in a second. So let's just do tutorial mod colon. This is going to be the walnut sapling over here. There we go. And of course, we, I mean, we can, of course, get it, but that is going to be fine. And then bone meal. Let's bone meal it, and we're going to see. There we freaking go. Here's the leaves. Here are the logs, and we can, of course, also... Oh, well, we can strip them right here. There we go. So that works. I don't know why there's no sound. I, th I feel like hasn't hasn't this been an issue before? But there was no sound in the in the stripping. I I don't remember. I don't know why there's no sound. I've seen this before, and I I don't know. If anyone knows, please feel free to comment it down below. I have seen this issue before. Uh, but yeah, that is the idea. Those are going to be the different things. And like I said, when you grow it, you can see it all grows well in different ways, basically. I don't have enough space. There we go. And then we have it. So that is going to be custom trees added to Minecraft. Awesome. And here for the full thing, of course, also added everything here to the blocks tab. Of course, quite important that we have this. And with that, everything is done. And that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, we'll talk about, of course, tree generation inside of the world. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.